Well, greetings fellow Romans. Expeditions Rome determine the destiny of Rome as you conquer foreign lands and navigate political intrigue in this turn-based RPG. Directly fight with your party of Praetorians, guide your legion to victory, and choose your own path in a story where every decision matters. Well, that's what the Steam page says at least. I'm going to set the scene uh, a little bit now, but if you want to skip ahead directly to the gameplay, there will be a chapter marker down below for those of you who are stuck into the roleplay side of things. Please stick around. I'm going to set a really good scene, I hope. So, uh, the inspiration for starting this playthrough of this, uh, quite frankly, excellent historical RPG came about when my wife and I started watching an old, and by old, I mean it came out in 2005, I believe, HBO drama series called, well, Rome. It's really fantastic. Uh, you should check it out. Anyway, two of the recurring characters who are not of the station of the rank of the Caesars or Ciceros or Pompeys of the world, they're just two average common soldiers named Lucius Verinus and Titus Pullo. These guys. They are really cool characters and I thought it would be fun to get stuck into role playing one of these two or even possibly both if we can in a playthrough of Expeditions Rome. Uh, and I can gather so far that this game is fairly historically accurate and uh, this is a little bit of something new for this channel, uh, but I hope you'll enjoy it. So getting back to these two, uh, it would seem a, good, a bit of a good idea to get to know them a little bit more if we are to play them or role play them going forward. So what I find really interesting about Brenus and Titus is that although they are highly fictionalized in the show itself, and this characterization of them, it's this characterization of them that I want to roleplay the series with. They were in fact historical figures, both of briefly mentioned in Julius Caesar's Bella de Galactio, which was his personal account of the Gaelic Wars. Let's start with Lucius Verinus. He could be described as a staunch traditionalist and a very patriotic Roman. Historically, and in the TV show, Verinus is a veteran centurion which will hopefully play very well as we roleplay him in this playthrough, if we do end up roleplaying him. His personality and character growth in the TV show really revolves him trying to balance his personal beliefs, his duties to his superior officers and the needs of his family and friends. He has a super rigid personality, and although the not and although he's not the most sort of sympathetic character, I think we might be able to, or he might possibly be the right person to lead our band of Praetorians in this playthrough. Then there's Titus Pullo, who between the two of them is a hundred percent the more likable character, and is my personal favorite. Historically, Pullo, or Pulfio, if you're actually being accurate, was also a Roman soldier and in the TV show is styled as a principus, which is how I think if we end up playing him, we will play him. The definition of a, uh, here's the definition of a rogue. He is generally a friendly, upbeat soldier with sort of devil-may-care attitude, paired with the morals of your classic pirate sort of archetype, and I think this is what draws me to him as a character. I think he has the appetite of a hedonist and a total lack of personal responsibility. Yet he has this strangely strong high moral bar and a level of integrity that will really often surprise you. So for this playthrough, and I think purely because I think he is going to be more fun to roleplay, we're going to go with Titus Pullo as our main character. All I can say is long live Titus Pullo. Last thing. Before we start, there is a demo for Expedition Roams on Steam, so if you like what you see in this playthrough, I encourage you to go check it out or purchase the game outright. Logic Artists are a very really cool little development studio, and if you like the series, you should check out their other Expedition titles. I think it's Conquistador and Vikings. You can really see the upward trajectory, and they are well researched uh, from a historical standpoint, and the gameplay is always excellent, and it's only got better. So, they seem to be taking this series in an amazing direction. Let's see how well they've done. Let's get stuck into Expeditions Rome. In the year of Lucius Licinius Lucullus, Rome was prosecuting several wars of self-defense, most notably in Greece, where Lucullus himself was commanding the legions. With everyone's gaze directed at the provinces, few could have known that a seemingly inauspicious event in Rome would become the central fulcrum around which the fate of the Republic would turn. The paterfamilias of a venerable patrician house had passed away unexpectedly, and a senator by the name of Vitellius Scaevola had made a bid for the hand of his eldest child. His widow alone believed that Scaevola had poisoned her husband and now strove to take his place and claim his property through marriage. Acting in secret, the widow arranged for her youngest child to be taken out of their villa in the dead of night and smuggled 
out of Rome. Right, a really cool little intro there and setting the scene from the game's perspective. Uh, so we are a member of a fairly well-respected family and uh, there is a, a senator of Rome uh, who is uh, trying to co-opt our family wealth and name uh, after uh, I suppose our character's father has passed away. Uh, so that is kind of where we're at, and we, as I said, are going to play with Titus Pullo. Now, unfortunately, I can't change the family name here, so we are Titus Furious Pullo. I've created a portrait here that is approximately as close to our man Titus here, as well as as much as I can do with the character creator. So from here, let's move forward and see what happens. Right, so uh, we now get to pick, apparently, the rhetorical style. So each of these three perks unlocks unique dialogue options and persuades other people in different situations. Interesting. Think about what kind of character you want to roleplay and choose your rhetorical style accordingly. During the story, you may get a chance to master a second technique. Fantastic. That is an amazing piece of news. So I think, uh, considering that we are a roleplaying uh, Titus Pullo, uh, he is would have been a lesser educated man, uh, more on the side, I would say, of pathos, the art of winning people over using rhetoric or emotional manipulation. I don't think there's much uh, uh, sort of authority or logic uh, in our man Titus. So pathos is what we are going to go for. Let's continue. Right, and now we get our difficulty settings. I'm just chuckling having a look at this Augustus. Kaiser, Pompeius, and Crassius. Interesting. Good. I think we're going to take the normal uh, route. We're also going to play with Combat Death, uh, which enables permanent death of party members. Give ourselves a little bit of a challenge on normal. And we can have a Gladiator Companion. Change the final Companion character. Ooh, that's because I've got the DLC installed. Uh, to the DLC Gladiator class. If you disable this, the Companion will remain heavy in infantry. I think uh, let's 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 do that uh, to see what happens. Iron Man, we will leave off. Let's continue us, continue us with our journey. Did you hear me, Domine? Your body is surely present, but your mind seems somewhere else. Right. I I think we are straight into it here. So um, I assume uh, that we are on the run. Uh, I'm sorry, old friend. I guess I'm still thinking about what happened. I, you stunned by the beauty of the sea. I feel like I'm out of the depth. That's not a pullo answer. I think let's, uh, let's pick the first one. Our departure was very sudden, I know. But do not dwell on the past. Better to focus on what's coming at you. I asked the Triarchus how close we are to Lesbos, but uh, he would not give me a straight answer. Right on our way to Lesbos. Uh, he still can't be close to our destination. I wish we had to never leave Rome. The sooner I wet my blade, uh, the better I feel. Um, ooh, uh, Pullo would answer, I think, somewhere in the middle, which seems like the first Indeed. answer. In his defense, there are many islands on this sea, and they mostly look the same. Will you check with the Triarchus? Hopefully, he will give you a clearer answer. Right, he looks told like me his name is Geminus. Ooh, Geminus, the Triarchus. So I think Triarchus is the captain of the ship. It looks like we've got our first task yet. Press T to track. Fantastic. Uh, how close you are to Lesbos. Great. And it looks like we've got our first sort of uh, character-driven answer here, which we can only answer with. You just need a little more charm. 
make him like you, see if I can tease some information you out of him. You do have a way of speaking to people's emotions. I'm sure he'll be more helpful to you. You Thanks. should also go and thank Quintus Aquilinus. I do believe he saved our lives with his timely appearance at the villa. Great, so we've got an optional talk. Quintus Aquilus. Let's go find out who he is. Uh, let's uh, let's find out and see if there's any more passengers on the ship, shall we? Your mother paid Geminus handsomely to set off in great haste under cover of night. Two others did board with us, also bound for Lesbos. Young Gaius has been pacing impatiently over there, wearing grooves into the deck. There was a gladiator too, but I don't know where he went. Right, there's another passenger called Gaius and a gladiator. Um, right, let's, uh, I think we're going to continue role-playing Pullo here, see if we get anything out of this. Thank you for coming with me, Sinaras. Thank you for bringing me along. It will be wonderful to see my homeland again. Right, I think we're heading off to Greece, so that, that makes sense. Right, so let's see if, uh, uh, we left so quickly. My mother and sister, let's, let's see what he has to say. Do not worry. The Witelius brothers have no reason to do them any harm. Besides, you cannot save them by worrying. Focus on the task ahead. Right, so the Vitellius brothers, they are our enemies. Right, so let's go see if Geminus the Triarchus knows where he is. So there you go. Quest markers, mandatory objectives are red and optional objectives are black with the exclamation mark. Fantastic. And our goals are down here. Uh, WS needs pan. F to make your camera follow the character again. Oh, cool. Good. Um, all right, let's, uh, who's this over here? This is, uh, oh, this is, uh, Quintus Aquilus. Shall we wander over here and, uh, have a chat to Quintus Aquilus, shall we? Let's, uh, here we wander. Brilliant. Look at this. Quickly, Thank you, sir. We did indeed. Right, so, uh, Quintus. You handle the sea better than most. I'm glad. Right, uh, yeah, Centurio, I want to thank you for my timely, your timely arrival at my villa. The timing was fortunate, but there is no need to thank me. The consul sent me to get you. Please, call me Kaiser, if it's not too familiar. Haha, <laughs> Quintus, Kaiser, right, Kaiser it is. Uh, but it looks like a consul is on our side. That is good. Uh, then you can call me Pullo. With all due respect, I'd better not. Uh, right, not Aquilus. My subordinates call me Kenturio. My superiors call me Aquilinus. My friends call me Kaiso. Right, uh, I hope to call you Kaiso in the future then, sir. So in Roman culture, you often refer to you by your surname. So, um, yeah, Kaiso would be, uh, uh, yeah, an unusual one. Yeah. Um, so can we go over the plan? Our departure was far too hasty to discuss our course of action. Why not? Ah, she did not keep you apprised. Your mother has secretly been making arrangements with the Consul. You are to join his command staff as Tribunus. Right, so said Consul, who seems to be on our side, we're joined to join his command staff. Cool. Uh, Tribunus, uh, I think a Tribunus is, is it's, uh, not a really a frontline. Uh, let's find out. You will have very little responsibility. The Tribunus of Allegio assists the Legatus while they learn how to command a military organization. You will not see combat, nor will you make any important decisions. You'll be safe, as your mother wanted. Well, you know, um, I hope we do see combat. Um, what are we going to say? This will be an excellent stepping stone to becoming a senator. Well, that's not Polo. If I'm going to follow a legion around, I might as well make myself useful. Uh, yeah, that one sounds like Polo. I'm sure the console will find use for you. You seem to have a good head on your shoulders. You'll get the hang of things quickly. One word of advice. I know Lucullus is a friend of your family, but remember, he is the console. Elected by the people to rule all of Rome. It's best if you don't act too familiar with him in front of his men. Right, Lucullus is the consul. Good to know. So Lucullus on our side. Let's keep that in mind. It's best... Uh, what is the relationship with Lucullus? Have you talked to any of the other passengers? Yeah, let's ask about the other passengers. I had a brief talk with that gladiator who boarded before us, just to make sure he won't give us any trouble. He seems to have vanished, though. The young man over there, Gaius. He's apparently the nephew of the other consul, Marcus Aurelius Cotta. He's here to become a tribunus as well. You should talk to him if you haven't already. I'm sure you'll have much in common. Right, so the other passenger, Gaius, also going to be a tribunus, right? So let's, uh, let's ask the last question. Uh, Lucullus, how, do you, how are you related, or what is your relationship? For many with years, I was the primus pellis of Legio Prima Italica, which he commands. 
He needed someone he could trust to get you out of Rome and keep you safe. Right, so in other words, he's Lucullus's man. Good stuff, right. So, uh, yeah, let, let's go talk to the Triarchus, shall we? Or should we have a conversation with the young Gaius here first? Uh, I heard he's running from a senator who wants him dead. Hey, hey. Shh, keep your voice down. Hey, hey. yes, keep your voice Salve. down, son. Salve to you, Gaius. Uh, yes, uh, I don't, uh, I don't see what I'm tied to spirit. Are you one of Cassio's men? Yes, why not? <laughs> I am not anybody's man. I am Gaius Julius Caesar. <laughs> is this Caesar? Is this Julius Caesar we have here? Well met. That's all quite new to me. Mind if I ask you a few not questions? Not at all. But keep in mind, I'm not the most experienced soldier either. All right. Okay. Cool. Uh, uh, where are you from? I was born in Rome, but they say my family is from Alba Longa. Okay. That's uh, making this more, uh, more, more suspicious. That's a long story, my friend. Suffice to say, the powers that be are not fond of me. I have decided that staying in Rome could be, shall we say, hazardous to my health. Right, so you're on the same kind of journey as me. Um, right, I'm not going to ask you about that kind of stuff because you're not going to know anything about it. You told me yourself. It's going to give me rubbish answers. Let's go look for the Triarchus. Here's what the Triarchus. He's been like this all morning. I'm going to speak to the Triarchus, man. I'm not looking for anything. Hi, this is the captain. Geminus. Geminus, mm -hmm. how's it going, man? Mm -hmm. Yes. Salve, Geminus, wasn't it? What? Yes, Geminus. So, uh, I'm a little preoccupied. Right, and we can use our 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 uh, sort of our pathos argument here. It's a very fine gal you have. Most sad step off can reach levels of art. You have me a destination in sight, so a little bit of charm. Ah, thank you. I work hard to keep her in good condition. We should be at our destination just after midday. So please enjoy the rest of your journey. Wait. Wait? Do you finally see the horizon? What is it? Uh, do you finally see Lesbos on the horizon? They're headed straight towards us. They're gonna ram. Get your father's weapons. Let's see if you can actually fight. Well, Kaiser is uh, ready for a fight. Oh, okay, here we go. Yes. Oh, that was a real crunch. Awesome. I'm fine, Kenturio. Form up! Let's get these pirates off our ship! Right, so boarded by pirates and the stirring music has uh, started up there in the background and this is really the tutorial now, the preparation phase. Right, before combat begins, you will often have time to organize your Praetorians to a formation within the area highlighted in blue. Simply click on one of your Praetorians, then click anywhere you want to place them. It's generally a good idea to put your heavy infantry in front, support behind. When you're ready, click the end turn button to begin. Fantastic, okay. Uh, so who are our heavies? Uh, right, we've got us here. Uh, right, let's uh, let's put you there. Um, you're a heavy, aren't you? Uh, no, no, no. We want you over there. Uh, let's. Uh, we can't control you. Is our archer? Yeah, this looks like a good formation. Yeah, we got a good rundown on this side. Okay, cool. So let's start. Right, attacking. To attack an enemy, first select which skill to use. Each skill cannot be used more than once per turn. Uh -huh. Many skills require your action point to use, and some have limited charges per encounter. Right, so one action, one action. Okay, cool. All right, fend off. Can we use these? Uh, we can use our party in any order. Right, so let's see if we can get some arrows off here, shall we? Um, how about uh, we do this? Ooh, 100%, 4 to 7 health. Yes. Oh, status effects. Any status effect applied to a character will show up in the tooltip. The number indicates the remaining duration of combat rounds, while the bar indicates how severe the effect is. Status effects can be positive, negative, or neutral. To get information about a status effect, press E to open the list that is currently affecting a character. Cool. Okay, here, there's our status effects there on the left. Um, so, E. Uh, untrained, uh, incapacitated, this character will restore an action point. Oh, cool. Panicked and hurried. Awesome. Oh, he's Harry. I can see that now. Okay, so I have spent your action points. Uh, I still have movement. Seven movement on you, however. That's pretty cool. Right, let's get you, Sinaras. Uh, what is this here? Reach weapon skill. Yes. Can you bludgeon him? Oh, yes. Untrained enemies. Whenever you kill... Oh, that's what we just read. Okay, so we'll regain... And, uh, did he regain an action point? Uh, skill could be used once per turn. And action points cannot be saved for the next turn. Try to finish off any untrained enemy with a character 
Okay, good. Okay, I, okay. So maybe I should have uh, finished off that enemy with the with a bowman and with the with our archer here, Gaius, and got another shot. Good to know though. But we got an action back on Cineros. Right. Let's take Polo forward here. I'm gonna go. Uh, I think uh, Kaizo is gonna go for this guy over here, and I think I'm gonna. Maybe I should flank him over here so I can. Aim. I've got an action point on him. So let's do a slash. Ooh, ooh, rough there. Okay, uh, we're engaged. Can you come up and do a knock him on the head? Maybe we get him out. Oh, oh, wow, we got our point back. Um, and that's a logistic shove, um, which is useless right now. Uh, okay, let's just do that. It hasn't done anything. All right, okay, that was a mistake. Got to learn how to do that. Uh, what are we going to do? Slashing or bludgeoning? Two to five, three to five. Let's do that. Let's uh, run forward and bludgeon the hell out of him. Nice shot, dude. Okay, cool. Um, I think that is us. Next turn. Right. Let's see what the enemies have got. Oh, crikey. They're over the other side of the ship as well. Oh, ah, yeah. Okay, the guy's in... Uh... Oh, he's down. That guy in purple is is, is down. Ow, okay. Uh, Titus took a shot. Polo took a shot. Ow, okay. Our sailor down there is, is down. Ouch. Uh... Polo took another. Where really... is that gladiator who boarded with us? Up oh, where is he? Oh! Never nice underestimate shot. the value of an impressive entrance. That was impressive indeed. Fantastic maneuver. And it looks like we have a gladiator, bestia to butt, on our side. Fantastic. Okay, so we're a bit, uh, we're a bit surrounded here, aren't we? So, Bestia, what have you got? Have you got a precise stab and a 3 6 3 5? Uh, let's go for a 1 2 behind here. Let's run in here and let's do a 1 2, or we can do on two targets. Oh, yes. Okay, that, that would have weakened those two, which means with. Uh, maybe we can actually take him down here with uh, Polo. Oh, yes, and we regained our action point there. Um. Right, can we, we can we punch him? Uh, have we got a second slot? No. Ah, okay, it didn't quite kill him. Uh, that sucks. All right, uh, maybe we can get you down there. Oh, yes, okay. And then we've got the reach to take him out. Fantastic. Uh, and then you can still you can still come forward, can't you? Um, oh, we've still got we've still got Gaius here. Um, okay, Gaius. I want you to come around here, guys. Guys is gonna come around here. Um, we gotta take a shot, this dude. Two to four health. Oh, nice, crippled. Uh, let's go see what crippled is. Crippled, uh, E. 50% movement, minus. Awesome, fantastic. Uh, okay, you can, uh, oh, you're gonna, you're gonna hopefully kill this guy. Awesome. Um, and then can you come in here? And then this time we're going to use the logistics rallying call. Fantastic. And hopefully we can move you up a little bit further. Maybe to here. Awesome. Okay. Uh, a little bit of front line. Front line there on the, on the next three soldiers. Let's see what happens. We've got the friendly turn. Oh my gosh, did he just stab that guy? Okay, we took that shield damage there now. Ah, they're going for t they're going for Pullo 100% here. Yeah, this is ridiculous, right? Okay, but we had that shield there, so we took no damage. It was good getting our heavy into the front. Uh, okay, can you? We got a nice clear shot over here. What's this? Four to seven. Uh, can we get a shot of him and guarantee taking him out? That would be fantastic. Yes, nice shot in the throat. Uh, then run through here. Uh, and let's do another crippling shot. Uh, let's do another crippling shot there. Yes, fantastic. Uh, Bestia, can we get you around the back here? Let's flank him and let's do a... See if we can get Bestia to take him down. One left. Oh, oh, this disappointing. Fantastic. We are owning this fight. Uh, right, this is good. Uh, Bestia, what? Bestia didn't pick up a, a thing there. Okay, you, he's hurt. Uh, we have a hurt sword. We have, okay, let's just move you forward then quickly. Um, and 
give you a swing at him. Fantastic. Um, and then can we come through and maybe do a reach shot and end this fight? I think we can do that. Um, reach. Boom. Right, I think we got them all down there. Fantastic. Okay, that was a that was a Neptune's asshole, barbarians. Oh, uh, Kaiser, uh, yes. The Triacus run us straight into the pirate ambush, Freeman. Allow me to execute him right here and right now. This traitor must be working with them. Well, this is a twist of events. Uh, all right, so Bestia thinks that the Triarchus, the captain, was working with those pirates. Um, we're saying this war against the pirates. It's no surprise that we should be attacked by pirates on our way. I believe it's so. Yeah, too. Don't be naive. This was no random attack. They were out for blood. It is quite unusual for pirates to attack any ship let alone a heavily armed Roman galley. They prefer to attack lightly defended coastal towns instead. It's less risky and more profitable. Well, let's go talk to the man. Um, all right, so um, we're gonna go and talk to the... Oh, awesome, we've got the whole, we've got the whole crew following us now. The whole little three crew. Okay, let's go talk to the, to Geminus. Geminus. The... You steered us into a trap. What do you have to say for yourself? I had nothing to do with it, I promise. They came out of nowhere. Silence! You utter nonsense! By Mars, it is the sea! How can anyone come from nowhere? We cannot execute a man based on no evidence. Besides, we need our Triarchus to make it safely ashore. Huh. What do you say, kid? What well, do I you can... think we should do? That came in really aggressive there. Um, okay, let's let's question. Uh, there seems to be two arguments here: the uh, the bestia, the gladiator, and, and Gaius. So let's let's question bestia first. We are close to our destination, and we can reach it without him. If there is a possibility that he is working with the enemy, we cannot risk to let him live. Mercy, doubt, hesitation. These are all openings that the enemy can exploit to kill you. Mm, it's a good point. This man's value to us is far less than the threat he may pose. Good argument from a gladiator, I must say. All right, Gaius, you with the other side of this. We are, many of us, important people on our way to join the action against Lesbos. Is it not conceivable that the rebels heard of us? The Kingdom of Pontus is known to sponsor pirates, to harass and weaken Rome. I do not believe we have any reason to suspect our Triarchus of colluding with them. Okay, you know, look, you know, Polo's not the most logical guy on the planet, but uh, I don't think he'd be spared by that argument. It's too much like Bestia's. I think he needs to be executed. No tolerance for failure. Very well. Let us hope you will hold yourself to the same standard. Right, uh, I'm bound by honor and duty. No Ron Roman would dare ignore these. Agreed. And you had better remember this. Or I certainly will. No, right. I, I had no way of knowing. Please. I told you. Keep silent. Oh, are we going to spear him in the back? Oh. Brutal. Rowers, up the tempo. And keep your eyes open. All right, it looks like uh, we've got some um, uh, sort of relationship uh, markers there as well. Well, everyone, I think that concludes uh, what I'm imagining is the basic intro tutorial. And what it's done is we've landed up here on a character creation, a class screen. So now we get to pick our class. And I think we've had a brief sort of look in that tutorial about what those various classes are. I noticed that Bestia was a Velus, and I actually think this is the class we're going to go for, for our man Pullo. And the reason is I spoke to you about how he's sort of the archetypal pirate slash sort of brawler type character. And uh, this is it. I think there's uh, it's a speed and unpredictability infantry allows them to call great chaos amongst enemy ranks. 
good mobility, evasive fighters, uh, and I think that they're kind of, that's kind of what I envisage Pullo as. Just to, to, so you know, we also do have the Principus, which is our sort of very heavy frontline tank. Um, we have the Sagittarius, which is our, obviously our Bowman. Um, we have uh, the Taurus, which is sort of another third line back sort of reach. I think that's uh, Cineros' class. And then we have the Gladiator class, which I believe, uh, as we suppose in chosen the main, we will we'll get added to our crew later on down the line. So I think Velus is what we're going to go for. So Velus is what it is. Uh, so we start out with some sort of basic armor. And I think that out of the subclasses, because there is subclasses here too, we're going to go for the Duelist. Because um, this gives you an extra uh, sort of offhand action with a shiv. And I like that idea. The other ones are tactical advance, which is more sort of uh, not incurring tax of opportunity. And there's a cheap shot, a critical chance on the next turn, which is useful. Uh, but I think the shiv is a cool idea. Although there's a cost focus, a focus cost here. But I think this is uh, for so much more powerful. So we're going to do that. Going to get the jewelers in. Wait, can we, can we go back? Uh, we can't go back. Ah, uh, we're locked in. Right, maybe we should have gone for the assassin. But anyway... That is where we're going to end this episode, everyone. I will see you for the next episode very, very soon. We will continue with Titus Polo and our quest yeah, to right the wrongs done upon our family. Until then, please look after yourself. I am the bed.